What up, Watch Peeps? I remember listening to Chris Vale a couple years ago discussing a conversation he had with either his manufacturer or the factory he uses in China, and he asked them how they saw their role in the industry evolving in the coming years. And their answer, he said, scared him. What they said was they'd probably start a micro brand like his. Now, I think San Martin is the culmination of that prediction. We're seeing more and more of these factories starting their own brands like Heimdaller, Addy's, Steel Dive, etc. And they're producing really quality products at really good prices. Now, I've been on the verge of buying a San Martin about a million times, but I've never actually pulled the trigger, so this is my first time handling one. Let's get to it. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. So this is pretty cool packaging that these come in. It's like one of these uh, watertight cases, kind of like a lower end version of what Halios used to ship their watches in. I don't know if he still does or not, but it's pretty cool. I've definitely seen worse packaging. I don't know if it's actually watertight or not, but it's padded inside. You'll get your watch and then you have the hang tag. Uh, there's an instruction book and warranty conditions. Not actually looked in there. And then you get an actual warranty card, dated and stamped. Yeah, pretty cool packaging. And then you have your watch here. Now what this is, is um, one of their pilot watches using an NH35, uh, kind of like a no frills pilot, but very clearly an homage to the IWC Mark 11, I believe it is. I'm not super uh, current on the IWC models. But it's a pretty cool watch. I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about design-wise here. I love the color of this strap, by the way. One of those, like, green tans. So, notably with this model, this is almost like what you would call the Type A Flieger dial. And the handset, I think, is what's most unique. You have this squared-off hour hand and the eh, pretty standard minute hand and a non-loomed second hand. It does have a screw down crown, a pretty standard coin edge bezel. And like I said, it's an NH35. Um, so there is a phantom date in here, or I guess it's an NH, could be an NH35 or 36. I don't know what's actually under there, but um, there's no clicks. So I'm guessing the date mechanisms have been removed, but the phantom stop is there. Time setting in the last position. Um, no issues with any of that. It's all real smooth, screws down just fine. So you get a very nice matte black dial. Um, that's something I'm kind of a fan of. I really like, you can see if you look close, the loom plots versus the non-loom print. The Arabics 1 through 11 are very white compared to the other spots. Those are not loomed, and we'll take a look at that later. And you can see the outer hour markers are loomed and the hands are loomed with C3. Has a decent case profile, has nice brushing. You know, I'm not saying I looked at the transitions, but they look all right. It is fully brushed on the top of the lugs, the bezel, case side. Let's see if we can get a closer look there. Um, I'm a big fan of a fully brushed case. I just think it gives it that really cool tool look. But it has these turned down lugs, so it wears quite well. It does have a bit of a droopy case back, which is kind of common with NH35 watches. But it's not overly thick. I think it's just under 12 millimeters. I'll bring up a, a list of the specs at the end there, and we'll go over all the measurements. 20 millimeter lugs, and I believe it's a 39 millimeter case. Let's jump it off the strap and see what the case back. I think it's just a very... Yeah, just a plain circular brushed case back. So, I mean, you can see the design is very basic, very tooly, but I think that is um, a hallmark of these military tool watches. And this watch is available in, I think, like three other dial variations. I'll try and pop up pictures of those for you guys. And they're regularly available on AliExpress for about 150 bucks. 
So if you're wondering where the cost savings come from when you're buying from one of these factory direct brands in China, it is probably right here. This is clearly not a regulated or adjusted movement. They had just dropped it right in there and let it go at plus 30 seconds a day. The amplitude is a little low, but that's kind of standard for Seiko that typically runs with a lower amplitude than a Swiss movement. 0.4 beta are again, pretty common with a Seiko movement. I'm not worried about those, but obviously it's running quite fast. Who knows, Seikos are kind of weird. Sometimes on wrist, they will give you a lot better performance than what you see on the time grapher. But even so, plus 30 seconds a day is not fantastic. So looking at the specs, you will see it is a 39 millimeter case with a 48.6 millimeter lug to lug coming in at 12 millimeters thick with 20 millimeter lugs, has a screw down crown a flat sapphire crystal that does not look like it has any AR on it. They claim 200 meters water resistance. I have not tested that. Running a Seiko NH35 movement and C3 loom. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist and I'd say it wears quite well. It is, it looks tall and maybe 12 millimeters is tall for 39 millimeter watch, but it's, it's really not. And the NATO is adding to that. If you're looking for just this style of watch and you want to do it on the cheap, I would definitely grab one of these. In fact, I might. Here it is side by side, the 38 millimeter notice sector. And you can see they're pretty similar. The, this, the San Martin has a larger dial. And I think that makes that one millimeter size difference look a little more and you can see from the side the sector is actually a thicker watch not by much i think it's just a little under a millimeter but it is a thicker watch and here it is beside the new new mark 52 that sounded weird now the new mark is almost a 40 millimeter case and that's because of this asymmetrical case design. So you're almost counting the crown guards in as part of the case width. But I think these are actually very similar wares. The new mark is actually a thinner watch by about a millimeter and using a quartz movement. But if you look at it from this view, the case design minus the bezel is um, very similar. And lastly, here it is beside the 41 millimeter Tudor Ranger. Another design that is largely dial. Proportionally very similar. Design wise kind of similar. The Ranger coming in just a little thinner. And lastly, let's keep the loom. And here you'll see they are using C3 Super Luminova on the dial and hands, quite bright. I think San Martin is known for doing a really good job with their loom. Slightly brighter on the hands and the cardinal indices. I think that's just because it's a thicker application in those spots. But good loom overall. So there it is, the San Martin NH35 39mm Pilot. I think these are really cool. At 150 bucks, I would not be disappointed, even at plus 30, but I'm not real picky when it comes to accuracy. That would probably drive some people nuts. Let me know what you guys think. Share your thoughts in the comments. Before I let you go, sneaker check. Wear my Jordan 3s today. All right, that's it. I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.